let's start with the class apex basics so that is the first chapter that we're going to talk about apex is a strongly typed apex is a strongly typed object oriented programming language strongly typed object oriented programming language which is proprietary which is proprietary language which is proprietary language developed by salesforce.com which is proprietary language developed by salesforce.com to allow us to write the code to allow us to write the code that executes on the force.com platform to allow us to write the code that executes on the force.com platform uh, what do you mean by strongly typed language so the definition says it's a strongly typed object oriented programming language what is strongly typed we all know what is object oriented right what is strongly typed strongly typed so strongly type uh, programming language is a strongly type language basically means that it is compulsory or it is necessary for you to declare the data type of the variable there are some languages out there like javascript and everything in which you can store anything in var right but uh, but when it comes to apex it's a strongly type uh, programming language that means there are different data types and you need to declare every variable with a particular data type that's exactly what it is and uh, then there is object oriented programming language uh that basically means like uh, it follows the concepts of oops object oriented uh programming that's what strongly typed programming language basically means okay next slide on and yeah by the way uh, it is a proprietary language of salesforce that means this language is developed by salesforce and is going to run on to salesforce servers only it will not run on any other machine right it will not execute it will not compile on any other machine except in the salesforce servers or the force.com servers uh yeah so and it helps you write the business logic that's what it is next apex is saved and compiled apex is saved comma compiled apex is saved comma compiled and executed on the servers of force.com platform and executed on the servers of force.com platform and executed on the servers of force.com platform again the same thing uh, when you're writing down an apex program an apex class uh, it will be saved onto your server and as soon as it gets saved like before it gets saved even it will get compiled i mean there is no another uh, function that you have to run in order to save that class or save that program when whenever you will save it will automatically get compiled and if there is an error it uh, show you the error and the program will not get saved or the class will not get saved but if there is no error the program will get saved and whenever you will execute that particular class that class will be executed on the onto the force.com platform itself make sense good cool. next features of apex upgrades automatically upgrades automatically basically uh, what that means so many of you uh, must be using uh, like if you are uh, writing code in java then some of you are using java 7 some of you are using java 8 some of you might be using java 5 there are different versions of java that you guys are using why because you haven't upgraded the version of java yet right it is the same with any other programming language there are versions of programming languages that comes up every uh, other time so it's the same with uh, apex as well so apex comes up with different different uh, versions and it gets up updated automatically you do not have to install or download uh, a new compiler or do anything it automatically gets upgraded so that's one of the feature of apex next it's integrated with the database it's integrated with the database so uh, what that means so like let's talk about a program that we uh, we have written in java so in order uh, for that program to interact with the database we first had to create a uh, jdbc connections and everything and then we had we had to write a particular set of code set of instructions like uh first we created a connection object then we uh, fired the query then we, then we created a connection then we created a statement object then we fired the query then we got the result in result set there are some like uh, formalities or uh, there is a particular thing that you have to do in order to connect the program with the database right that's not the case with apex 
it's already integrated with the database so all what you have to do is just write the query in square bracket and it will automatically return you the result from the database that's it no uh, no database connection no connection uh, like no connection object statement object and anything all like it's it's already integrated with the database so we can like literally do anything from apex program to manipulate the record that we have got in our database without even creating a, a connection between the database and the apex program make sense next easy to test easy to test so apex provides its own testing framework uh, which allows you to test the code or test the classes that you have written in apex uh, with the help of uh, the test classes and the unit test cases and the framework that is provided with to it and it's very easy to test it's uh, like, like not that difficult as it is in another, another uh, programming languages next multi tenant environment multi tenant environment or multi tenant environment multi tenant environment so okay so the spelling of multi tenant is like this multi tenant or multi tenant right what do you mean by multi tenant or multi -tenant? multi tenant so there is a single resource which is being shared with multiple tenants or multiple orgs right so being uh, apex like um, i mean it runs on the multi tenant environment basically so the reason like as it runs on to the multi tenant environment or multi tenant environment there is a like there, there are certain rules and regulations and limits that we have to follow so that not a single user okay let's say uh, there is a, there, there is an apartment right and there are three rooms inside that apartment so i mean there needs to be some limit uh, for the people who are using that apartment otherwise uh, they will use like what if single person uses all the three rooms and keeps their stuff in all the three rooms there will be a problem for the that will be a problem for the other people who are uh, in that room yes or no so that, for that there are governor limits and different different stuff uh, which are there in apex because it runs on to the multi tenant environment but that's beneficial as well because when you uh, like earlier when we used to create enterprise applications in which we had to buy servers and everything that added a lot of cost to the application or the platform that we are trying to create that's not there anymore because uh, apex runs on a multi tenant environment next you can you can uh, so yeah, I, I mean like depends on what kind of an application you want to create if you want to create an application into salesforce that should take the database and everything from your on premises uh, application in that case you have to create apis in your on premise application and call those apis from your salesforce application so that's what you have to do so basically you're talking about uh, creating a hybrid structure or hybrid application Whenever you talk about hybrid application, there are two platforms involved, normally. And whenever you want to interact with two platforms, there comes APIs, right? So whenever you want to interact between two applications or two platforms, there comes APIs. So depending on what type of application you want to create, we can create or use different different types of APIs in order to maintain a connection or maintain a relation between both of those applications, and then package it into one and then sell it. So let's let's say uh, you you you've got uh, an application on Java, right? That's on premises, and you want to move that onto cloud. Salesforce uh, has got a product which is called as Roku, right? With the help of that, we'll be able to move it to the cloud, where the servers uh, will be used of Heroku, and this Heroku and Salesforce will be connected with the help of Heroku Connect uh, add-on. And with that, with the, with the help of that add-on, whatever the data that will be created into this application will be saved into the Salesforce database. And whatever changes uh, we're gonna make into the Salesforce database are gonna be reflected into that application on, uh, as well with the help of Heroku Connect. Getting it? So what you're talking about is there is already an application created. Now I want to move that application to cloud. How I can do that? So you can do that with the help of Heroku and like Heroku uh, provides. So Heroku is uh, a pass where you can use open source uh, like uh, open source programming languages uh, like java go scala clojure ruby these are the languages that you can use uh, to create an application onto it or these are the languages that it automatically supports so you just deploy that application over there on heroku servers and then connect that application or that heroku server with your salesforce application with the help of heroku connect add on that's what it is but yeah, i mean if you if you didn't got it then there's no need till now 
cool uh is is done right next up next point apex code is saved apex uh, code is saved against different versions of against different versions of force.com api against different versions of force.com api what does that mean imagine i have created a, a code uh, let's talk about this i'm creating a java application right and when i'm creating a java application i mean this, this application i've i've been working on to uh, i mean there is an application on which i'm i'm working on from last 5 years and it is being upgraded again and again and again and again so earlier when i created uh, that uh, application the version of java that i was using was 7 but now the version is 9 and i am writing the new code in 9 version right but don't you think that will that will be a problem because the earlier classes that i created in version 7 will also get executed on java 9 and it might create a problem for us yes or no yes so in that case uh, what do you think the solution should be so uh, in java it's not that easy uh i mean you'll have to create different uh, i mean yeah, different uh, programs and different structures and then use different different uh, jre for different different classes that you are writing now but in apex it's not that difficult like let's say if there is a there, there is an apex code that i created with uh, api version 35 and now the api version is 42 so the 42 will automatically run with the fort, compiler of 42 or the uh, interpreter of 42 and the code which is saved with the api version 35 is going to be executed with the api version 35 is going to be uh, uh, executed with the api version 35 or the interpreter of an api version 35 only because every class every apex class or every apex program gets stored with the api version with which it got created right so if i'm writing a program uh, there is an option for me to select like which api version with which api version you want to save and like whichever the api version i select it will get saved with that api version and whenever we will try to execute that class or execute that program it will be executed with it will be executed with that particular version of the api that, with which i have saved that particular program uh, i think you've got it yes or no anyone wants to wants me to repeat this no cool uh, right like now write down the write down the next apex is a case insensitive language right so like apex is a case insensitive language so that basically means that you can write down upper letter or lower case no matter uh, what you want i mean it will be considered as same that's exactly what it is uh, 